Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Kauai. I'm Lily Williams and I'll be co-hosting today with Chantel Selville, who is live from the Gold Coast in Australia. Now ladies, would you like to have it all? Well, you can. And Chantel and her guests will tell us how. Aloha, Chant now let's get to it. Aloha, Chantel. Aloha, Lily. Hi. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's really neat seeing you in the studio instead of me. I how, know. How was, how was morning in the studio. Going great. It's been really fun. We miss you here, but can't oh, wait to Lily's hear to talk to your guests. Lily's a, a communication. There are experts from Click Communications in Hawaii. So for any of you, uh, have, have a look up K L I C K. Thanks so much. Had to give them a little plug because I'm so grateful for, for being there. <laughs> Now more about us. I'm here in the Gold Coast of Australia with two amazing entrepreneurs. I'm so excited. This one beside me is one of my very good friends, Trina Probert. She's an entrepreneur and businesswoman. I mean, they all go together, but I, I call her a business boss. So, And then we have the incredible entrepreneur and artistin. So look at the way she's presented. Just incredible. Susan Yacoub. And we are in her dream home. And that's why this episode is all about how you can have your dream home, your ideal partner, your ideal dream job, and even have creative expression all together and a family. Can you believe that? These ladies have it all and they're going to tell us how they do it. So we're going to start with you, Trina. How do you do it? Well, some, some of it is accident, it has to be said, <laughs> <laughs> but, but for the most part it's just um, a lot of energy and really believing that if you, um, if you believe in your dreams and you chase after them, that you can have them. And to be honest, I don't know that I actually ever realized that you had to think about whether you could have it all. I just went about living my life and did the things that I was really passionate about, connected with the people that I really believed in and, um, and felt could help me to achieve my dreams and just focused on it. Perfect. <laughs> That's how you do it. We've got lots more in the episode. But... Susan, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I've, I've always loved that. And working in leather since I was nine years old and I've been working in it for 40 years and I've just stayed with the same medium and worked towards what I now call my retirement which is making beaded jewellery and with leather and perfecting my techniques and staying focused with that but in the meantime having several careers and a family and just always staying focused on what I love and my passions and, uh, and taking the opportunities when they come up so and recognizing them uh, and just following through. I think I think that's a really important um, important point is actually recognizing them. Mm. So the starting point for me with that is actually staying open to opportunities and and realizing that they can actually come in any form. I mean, our relationship is a little bit of an example <laughs> of that as well, um, because. Uh, Susan and I actually met because I met her daughter, mm -hmm. who's also an amazing creative and entrepreneur um, and um, a growing businesswoman in her own right. But then I met you and we became friends through mm -hmm. that and, and now we're also commercially intertwined as well. Yeah. So I think being open, but um, finding ways to link that to your passion, but also just having a commercial focus mm -hmm. really helps too. Yeah. And one of the things I was most inspired by when I spoke to Susan, we had a I chatted a while back when we first were speaking, and you told me how it actually ran, you know, ran in the family, and mm. what you went to the markets with your mom, and the smell of yeah. leather. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Oh, I fell in love with leather when I was nine years old, and I went to a leather store, and I put my head into a bin of leather, and <laughs> I was so <sold. laughs> That was it. <laughs> Isn't it incredible how something so simple can yeah. really... Because your, your mom was into... Yes, we were involved in the craft seen very heavily uh, through the 60s right through the 70s and then I took off on my own career and then um, just developed it from there um, and certainly surpassed uh, everything that I thought that I could achieve in my life with my leather work which was very exciting I've made several com co commercial careers out of it uh, making mobile phone covers selling Australia wide through the 90s um, setting up uh, communication business uh, based on from the mobile phones and uh, in but I also started off with nursing so everything sort of culminated to to develop um, a commitment to my work being able to work within teams and 
and retail training and everything else and it sort of culminated into where I am now which is a very strong base with um, doing trunk shows um, and uh, just communicating with other women and, and the jewellery uh, links the women together and they get very excited about what I do and and very passionate uh, with the things that, uh, that they Someone see. Someone like women to be passionate about sparkly <laughs> things. And it's, and it's, it's wonderful, they, they get really excited and they inspire each other and I just love that intercommunication when we get together mm -hmm. in a trunk show. Um, because usually sort of a group of friends or acquaintances that all have something in common. So. It's like a party. <laughs> of like-minded people as yeah. well, which is neat. That's why we're we're actually all here on the Gold Coast, obviously at Susan's house, but we're all part of, um, it's actually a network marketing company called Arbonne that we, I had a guest, which was Michelle, and Trina had introduced me to Michelle. I interviewed her on the Savvy Chick Show, and before you knew it, I was part of her team. So it's another mm -hmm. example of how powerful <laughs> women get together and really inspire and empower one another. I know a lot of you, we haven't really done any relationship um, episodes on the Savvy Chick Show. So for these two lovely women, both have incredible partners or husbands, I'd love to know a little bit of advice how you how you found them, how you do it, what you look for, just a bit of just a bit of relationship talk. <laughs> well, you know, there are no straightforward answers when it comes to <laughs> no, relationships. We want, we want one answer. One answer. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, I, I actually met my husband over 20 years ago when we were golf caddies together in Japan. But I was 19 and he was 20. <laughs> And, you know, we, we definitely had a deep intellectual connection at that time. Um, but uh, don't get me wrong, we were not intellectual 20-year-olds. 20 20 year we were, we're pretty silly, but compared to the rest of them, we probably had quite a, a strong intellectual connection, but nothing else at that time. But what happened over life was we continued to be friends. And ultimately, we ended up working together at an investment bank of all places. And... Uh, just gradually our, our love for learning and our love for creation and building things really drew us together and we discovered when we were working in um, a corporate that we loved working together but you know the real world is not necessarily the way I'd always like it and so um, you know, not everybody's always comfortable when you have a business um, or work with your partner because it can be quite unsettling for them in some ways. I mean, I know you've had that experience, Susan, I'll come back to that in a moment, but for me, my experience was I wasn't willing to let go of the fact that we're awesome when we work together. Mm. You know, we're better when we work together, mm. um, better as a couple and also better as business people. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a rare thing, but I do know some amazing partnerships like that. And, for me, setting up uh, my own business felt like the right way to bring that to life. It also gave me the opportunity to genuinely be who I am and do the Very things that I love. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm deeply involved in investments and financial services, which doesn't seem perhaps very creative and exciting from the outside, but I'm a deeply creative person. And, you know, I whistle a lot and I hug people and I wear colourful clothes. <laughs> So I didn't really fit in very well. And so, um, you know, my desire to have um, an amazing, innovative, creative business in financial services where I could be myself and work with my husband. I mean, he wasn't my husband when I first uh, worked with him, but now he is. And, um, you know, I think we're amazing and powerful together. And because it's our own business, we have the opportunity to build the culture that we want, work with the types of people that we want to work mm. with, um, and really chase after our dreams together. Mm. And the gorgeous thing about that for me is that, you know, we've actually brought that first dream to life, which is we want to work together. Mm. And, um, you know, we're very deliberate about choosing people who respect and, um, and care for us more because we work together rather than the people who try to pitch you against each other. <laughs> You've had that experience as yeah. well, right? Yes. Um, it's really important to find someone that understands your creativity and can boost your, uh, for me, the business side, um, I needed help with, and he took that, you know, to the nth degree because I was busy staying at home having children. And uh, so he's sort of really, you know, together we just built this amazing team and, mm -hmm. uh, and we spent, you know, all of our lives together um, just building up different businesses and now he's 
doing his thing and I'm doing my creativity and we get together and he, he still supports me on the business side and personally and now I also have three adult children who support me as well. Which is yeah, wonderful. and we all join together around <laughs> your dining room table and come up with business ideas. I think yes. um, a, a theme that's coming through for me is about celebration. Mm. So earlier you were talking about um, women who come together mm. and that energy and connection and really you're celebrating women with your creativity mm. and your work and mm. allowing people to enjoy that, that side mm. of themselves as well. But um, when people come together and are supportive of each other's business desires, dreams and goals and, and allowing them to work alongside lifestyle choices, I think that's really celebrating the individual and celebrating independence of thought, freedom to express yourself. And then I think the other piece of that is that um, Michael, your husband, you know, clearly um, instead of being threatened by your independence and, and, and brilliance, mm -hmm. um, he celebrates that. <laughs> well, it's, it's absolutely true. I mean, you're, 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 you are incredibly um, talented. And so, you know, some, some people can be threatened by that. And that's actually where some yes. of that conflict comes from that you're talking about. For me, I think that what um, my husband's been able to do for me is um, he taught me to be comfortable in celebrating my own difference. You know, I'm not the same as everybody else. Nobody is the same as everybody else. And I really don't understand why we're all trying to shove everybody into the same box. I actually think where genuine opportunities, creativity and growth comes yeah. from is when we're able to celebrate each other's difference. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what happens when you get strong women together, mm -hmm. strong communities of people together and, and really working on, on celebrating each other. And having confidence husbands. Well, yes, this, yeah, can you go further into that, how you actually choose your, how you choose your ideal partner or what type of qualities? Well, they have? Very deliberately. I, have, I actually have a list. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I hit 30, my list got shorter. <laughs> so young girls, you could have a list this big, but as yes. you get older, you might have to. But one of the main things for me was um, about creativity, uh, to know that he would understand my creativity. And one of them was about colour and Michael surpassed even what I knew about the psychology behind different colours. So to me on the first date, that really sealed the deal. Um, and I wanted to get in, to know him more because just from that question. My that husband's colour blind. What does that mean? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> They're relying on us to bring the colour into well, their world. Well, maybe colour blind, yeah, colour blind guys could be good. Add that to your list. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, about um, that list, when, mm. when, when I met you, something that you said was that you, um, you certainly were attracted to Michael, mm. but you're attracted to him because of many things. And one of those was that you were looking for a partner in mm. life. And for you, a partner in life is also a partner in business. Mm. And, um, I, you know, that's really stuck with me because... I think sometimes as women, we feel like we don't actually have the ability to necessarily choose. Mm. We wait to be chosen. Mm. And um, we also potentially focus on the wrong things. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with a gorgeous man who makes your heart sing because he's hot. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know. I, I mean, I'm in my mid-40s well, Both your husbands now. are hot, <laughs> so they can have it that too, but more importantly. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that only goes so far. Exactly. This that is what the most important so part is. Yeah. You didn't pick them on that. That's the... No. And I, I mean, it's not actually... So what I'm not saying right now is that you need to go into business with um, someone you fall in love with. And by the way... Because I'm sorry. not. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That doesn't have to be different a way. man, by the way. It can be a woman as well. So it's really about the, the, the choices that you make for yourself, but about your life partner. And for me, that's the key. So uh, I'm married to the man who is my soulmate, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, he definitely makes me better professionally, but also personally. Um, and, you know, I really think that they're the things that we need to be looking for. And, you know, you want to draw to you in your personal life as your, you know, your friends, mm -hmm. um, your partners, 
but also in your professional life, you want to draw to you the people who are actually going to lift you up and allow you and help you to be a better version of yourself. Because we're on a growth journey all the time, or we should be on a growth journey all the time. Mm -hmm. And to be there when you're you know, down, things are, <laughs> things are troubled, and they can help you through that. Yeah. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing like being. Well, there's nothing like being in business with someone mm -hmm. and going through really mm -hmm. challenging times to work out whether they're going to be there for you through thick and thin. Trust me. <laughs> and um, we we were laughing about this um, just the other day that so many people when they find out that you work with your your husband, they're like, oh my God, I couldn't mm -hmm. do that. How do you cope with that? And my response to that is that for me, it's the exact opposite. I, I, I don't know how people don't work with the person <laughs> that, that, that they love, but you know, it's different for everyone. And that's why I love that, that you both share this because I mean, it's just, it's different. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people work with their husband and if they do, it's maybe not, you know, successfully, uh, for instance, but both of you have been able to create mm -hmm. successful businesses with, with your husbands and as well as keep a strong, healthy relationship, mm -hmm. have families, yeah. Build your dream homes. I mean, I think there's, I think there's often a misconception, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because it actually speaks to some of the discrimination against women mm -hmm. and um, and attitudes in society. And you know, we're we're talking between two different countries at the moment, but um, you know, Hawaii and Australia are actually not that different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think our beaches are pretty. No, we have good beaches too. <laughs> but, um, but I think that it's. Um, it's really about um, respect and, yes. and empowerment yes. and a lot of people mm -hmm. make the mistake and think that you know our, our husbands have been really nice to us and letting us have a career in their business <laughs> well no. you guys are really nice to them <laughs> it's so sweet of you to let them have a career in your business <laughs> I, I, I think that's just so important especially for young women and I mean even you know being younger when I was in my early 20s I was quite highly and powerful like marketing position PA management role and often a lot of the guys around would choose these girls that weren't nearly as you know driven I suppose and it kind of made me think well why am I so driven and doing all this stuff and should I sort of dim myself down so that I can maybe find someone suitable but the truth was the more that I stayed at my level and focused on the things I loved and was more who I am and was that strong powerful woman then you attract that type that type of person into your life so anyone watching this or if you've ever thought that or felt that, or you think men don't like independent women, well, I mean, these two are prime examples that really good quality ones do. So something to, to keep in mind. So on, so we've done a bit of relationship talk, um, a little bit. It's fantastic though. I don't think it's spoken about enough in, in this sort of empowering way to help women and, and girls, because obviously as you get older, this is something you need to think about. But with, when it comes to you know um, business, like how did you actually choose what you wanted to do in business? Um, well, I never choose is, is, the, <laughs> is the answer. And um, that can actually be a problem for me because I do want to do everything. And so a part Trina of- Trina wants to help everyone. She's amazing <laughs> at business. Everyone she meets, she wants to help with their business. But we yes. need 20 Trinas, no 50, maybe 100. <laughs> so um, so uh, Susan talks about the absolute importance of focus and, and focus yes. is absolutely critical. We'll come back to that in a moment. <laughs> um, so choosing um, isn't necessarily something that I've done in the way that you mean, I don't think. I think what I chose was to, um, I feel, I actually felt like I didn't have any choice. I always felt like I needed to build and create things. That's just in me. And um, I never run out of ideas and I never run out of energy. I mean, I was working for very late last night, so I'm a little, little sleepy today, but um, I never run out of energy for creating and building new things. I never stop seeing the connections and links between ideas and opportunities. But what it is about that is it's my excitement and passion um, for creation and connection that keeps driving me forward and, and that's probably the link between us and what you do. In terms of my businesses, um, I really just look for opportunities. I look for things that get me excited um, and where I actually feel like we can make a difference. Um, but I, I'm not a bleeding heart, you know, I. Um, I'm very commercial 
as well. So I look for market opportunities um, and I look for ways that I can deliver real value to solve problems or create new opportunities. Um, and but which is also going to stimulate me intellectually and make it fun for me. And then that's how you live your ideal lifestyle and have it all, is if you're doing what you love. But you might also choose the people you work with. 100%. Make sure they are as committed as you are. 100%. They're as interested in their business and they're also creative as well. And so, you know, you're, you're actually enjoying your work because you're working with other people, because you are very much a people person. 100%. And I think it's also understanding, though, that there are different types of creativity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm deeply creative in ways that um, are nowhere near as spectacular from an artisan's perspective mm -hmm. as yours, but I am actually very creative in terms of creating mm -hmm. material things as well. Um, but I express my creativity in business through coming up with new models mm -hmm. and innovations and ideas and different Which ways to connect things. Um, but that that piece around bringing together um, the right types of people is so important because my husband's very creative, but he's an investment, you know, mm -hmm. chief investment <coughs> officer and a macro global econ economist, you know, it doesn't <laughs> sound very creative, <laughs> but, um, you know, he's incredible the way that he sees patterns and links, opportunities mm -hmm. and ideas. And so see, that's creativity in that itself together. and that's interesting because I think the challenge of why people don't have as much creative expression as they perhaps would want to or should or, or would feel vibrant in having is because they don't recognize that. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would think that that's a creative pattern, but Craig is fantastic at that and that's how he expresses his creativity and fuels mm -hmm. his passion. Yeah, and I think bringing together people with those different strengths, though, mm -hmm. is really powerful because that actually allows you to extract, um, you know, it's what we're talking mm -hmm. about, you brought deep creativity into the business and correct the heart of the blood mm. of your business and Michael brought the business mm. side and together you're able to flourish and learn with each mm. other. And yet yeah. Michael has a creative business <coughs> side but very also creative. very yeah. commercial which is important to have have the combination of those and then be able to flourish mm. together. You, I mean for you it's obvious your creativity looking what you're wearing. I mean you've created all that and I can't wait till <coughs> after the break we'll, we'll share some of Susan's journey and creations but mm. just even to think of you know, you can visually express so well, and I think a lot of other creatives can be more challenged because if they don't think they're creating like that, they might not feel that they have a creative expression. So if you look far enough within yourself what you're doing, it's kind of what lights you up. That's your creativity, and the more that you fuel that, the more inspired you become. And then, you know, as you said, just for example, with your designs, you just literally draw the patterns and get ideas that come to you and just just keeps you moving and flow and I assume they didn't they weren't perfect for immediately. Oh I can show you box disasters. <laughs> <laughs> and and I say that really deliberately because when you were talking about um, choosing, I actually also think that the key, I think the key thing is get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to just yes. get started because yeah. And so many people say to me, you know, I want to be in business or I want to do my own thing or I've got this idea and, you know, the reality is until you do something, it's actually, I mean, it's obvious, but it's not going to happen. And the reality also is that every great work of art, um, there's labour behind it. There's an evolution and a journey and persistence and, and experimentation and that's absolutely the same in business as well. So did I um, choose the sorts of businesses I wanted to do? Not necessarily, I just chose that I wanted to be in business and I got in and I just started doing it until I created mm. things that worked. And when you actually create something, you know, so exciting with such inspiration behind, I mean, we'll start getting to a few of the things here, but Susan, can you hold up that perk for us? <laughs> no. Very distracting for us, it's, all the beautiful yeah. things we can see. We, we want to show you a few things that we have around here. Now, what did you say happened with this? I uh, developed... I made this one in 2010. My daughter was working at Holston in New York and uh, Sarah Jessica Parker was doing a capsule range of clothing for Holston. And she came in and saw this one on the desk and went, oh my God, I love that. So Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> Just Sarah Jessica. <laughs> this, is what, this, is what, this is what Susan told me last night as I'm you know, eating some fruit at her beautiful kitchen bench here at oh counter in America. And uh, oh yeah Sarah Jessica Parker, of but course. You explain what it is. Oh it's, I it's a handbag. It's, oh, yeah, a, so it's got the strap there. So it's got a handbag that you can 
takes any mobile phones, credit but cards. You put it over your shoulder and it's a work of art. <laughs> Not that you can see Where it. Is? Sorry, everybody. But I also <laughs> made it so that it would sit on a table. So you can sit at dinner with your it's like a bird. friend it's next to you. It's see beautiful. the side? So Susan actually started her leather when in the 80s and she was doing, I don't know if we'll be able to put some images up during the show, but in the 80s, you know, all this amazing leather work and the it's leather clothing, clothing, yes. I mean, I, I think jewelry, you should bring that back. I was back. doing jewelry in the 80s. So my jewelry has sort of been in the back all these years and I've just perfected it and it's very professional and I've learned uh, techniques of eating and um, just to get back a little bit to um, being the being creative and how you get yourself started, I often give people the advice that you you want to do something you love. Say you love leather work and you want to do beading. You copy someone. You learn the techniques, and then it will just gradually emerge, and your own personality will come through. But you just have to get the techniques in and just start working with mm -hmm. it. And and that's the same with any me painting anything so that's really important if you're not confident in what you have in your own uh, visual and trying to do something totally different to someone else start off copying and then it will develop and what you said as well is that you'd started off and the leather and the, the beads that's been mm. your inspiration yes. but then you have this ability to create this 3d type yes. that mm. there's not a lot if anyone else out there who creates the jewelry the way that you do with that 3d and that came yes. from within and it's something that it's hard to copy if it comes from comes from within and I mean I'm just gonna pull one of these over here you can obviously see the gorgeous one that Susan's wearing but I mean these incredible works of art she just sits in her dream home I mean the other week we interviewed a uh, beautiful lady who's a stunt woman working from in her living room in her dream home on her trampolines <laughs> yes and, and in your dream home I mean if you looked out the window here she's just got the most beautiful view of the river here on the Gold Coast and she does her designs all day long creates them, beads them, and just is in her element, aren't you? And that's, you know, to be able to live in your dream home and, yeah. and have that. And my, I think my hobby is my, my business. Well, um, so yes. I do it seven days a week and I love it. Yes. Yes. There you go. Can you say that again, both of you? Because yeah. this is how you have it all. You do it seven days a week and you love okay, it. Okay, so it's really interesting. So um, people think I'm um, a bit crazy because I'm... Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm pretty busy, you know. Um, I have a blended family, so I've had two beautiful stepchildren. Um, I have a child from a previous relationship and I have a toddler, you know, well, he's really a toddler anymore, he's three and he's enormous, but so I have four children, I have two businesses and a bunch of others that I'm trying to build um, and, you know, I'm always trying to coach and connect other people mm -hmm. and people are just like, how do you do that? And, you know, there's a number of different answers to that. One, um, I'd much rather create an and get excited and, and achieve than sleep is the honest <laughs> answer. Um, number two, I have amazing support from my husband um, and I do have a wonderful nanny. Mm -hmm. I know that you had nannies. And this is children. how you can also have it, all these other things that you have to, yeah, support. to work, support yeah. in different ways of working. Yeah. So and, your life might not look exactly like someone yeah. else's ideal savvy life. Create your own. So well, that's, that's right. It's also about respecting yourself as yes. well. And, um, you know, there's a general expectation that um, someone's going to look after the children in the past. <laughs> in the past, <laughs> themselves. Yes, apparently not. <laughs> we tried that. It was a terrible failure. <laughs> but, you know, there was, a, there was always an expectation in the past that that was going to be women. But, you know, we're very lucky that the world has changed, at least in the countries that we live in. And, you know, we are able to build businesses. But so I think people sometimes feel um, uh, maybe selfish or um, guilty yeah. about investing yes. money into that service mm -hmm. or um, about not being there themselves. But, you know, I really believe that um, the best parent is one that is genuinely happy and enjoying yes. their role in life. And that may be being a stay-at-home parent, but I spent the first two years of my first son's life and I really loved it in many ways, but I was really challenged by that in many ways too. Mm -hmm. um, and so I turned him into a job and I'm very focused on it. <laughs> <laughs> <Poor thing. laughs> but, but um, you know, it's about making really strategic choices about the support um, that you put in around mm -hmm. yourself and, and not feeling guilty about that, you know, treating that like a business decision as yes. well. Yeah, it is. it is. 
But also, you've got to remember, my children are in the, all in their 20s. Um, so I have adults, um, and they have learnt from... Uh, they were well looked after um, with nannies and, uh, and myself and family. But um, they also learn um, how to manage their lives by your example. Mm. So that so now Trina's children are too young to appreciate it, but my children appreciate it. And they can see that they can have the alternative lifestyle of not just a stay-at-home mum. And they can have a business and they can have it all. They can, you know, have the husband and the family and... and you know, be an entrepreneur and travel with their job, and, you know, and it fits. You know, and children travel, and you know, it's it's accepted now, mm-hmm. um, and and the children learn. From I mean, they would have seen the example mm-hmm. with you about um, being true to yourself, mm-hmm. chasing your dreams, um, working hard, <laughs> but working hard. Mm-hmm. Being, oh, love. Yes, yes, but yes. but always working hard because mm-hmm. you wouldn't have always loved it, right? Always working hard, being focused, being committed, being determined because, um, you know, life isn't always easy. So it is about focus, determination, Mm. perseverance. (laughs) And that's actually why Mm. when you're working on something that you love or building something that inspires you Mm. or working with people that you respect and learn from and, um, and enjoy, that... That makes it all worthwhile because it isn't always easy and that's why those things are so important i think so you've been an amazing role model your children are amazing um not always i'm sure but, <laughs> but they're, they're, they are amazing they were halos right they're amazing <laughs> thank you so much ladies this has been an amazing show and we'll have to tune in next week to see what's going on in australia aloha <laughs>